the Apple IC. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Brian Miller Tech channel and today we're looking at this little guy. So this is the iPhone SE first generation from 2016. This was my, oh goodness, this is my second iPhone ever. My very first iPhone was the iPhone 5C, so you can imagine, well, I didn't really move on much design-wise, except of course the iPhone 5C was plastic and not that great. But obviously this is a lot better than that phone because it has the iPhone 6S internals with an iPhone 5S body. And let me tell you, I loved this phone when I had it. It was, to me, it was fast when I got it because of course it came from a 5C, that thing was slow. but. To me, this was fast, it had touch ID, it was fancy, I thought the cameras were great, I thought everything was great, but the only problem was the battery and the display. Now, the battery on here, um, well, when I had it, it was like on 80% usage, right? So that was pretty abysmal, so you can probably imagine me trying to use this every day was pretty sad, but not to fret, I did um, replace this battery, so now it's back to 100%. So that's good. I actually was trying to make a video on the battery replacement, but my phone crashed and I lost all the footage. Yay! Okay, but other than that, I decided I'm gonna use this phone for a day in 2022 and see what the experience is like. I, I'm coming from an iPhone 12 Pro Max to this thing right here. Now, after a day's experience, I can say it's pretty okay. I mean, okay, look. First off, we're gonna start with the display because you know it's really small. Um, the bezels around the display are pretty big because you know old design Apple was really loved the forehead and the home button bottom there right there and having this square display in the middle. But for what it is, it's really 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 small. So there's a lot of screen crunch going on here, but. You can still fit your widgets on the screen and still have the apps and it's still like just it looks nice still. So instead of the screen size, it didn't actually bother me all that much. Like I was watching my YouTube videos on here just fine. So if I open YouTube here, you can search up, you know, Brian Miller Tech. And look at that. It has slight lag too, which we'll get to that speed in just a second. Also, I cannot type BR. There we go. Brian Miller Tech. And look at that, we're at 108 subscribers. Thank you guys for subscribing, of course, but you know, we can just watch my latest unboxing video. You can hear this. Speakers are pretty meh, listen to that. Quality gaming at higher frame rates too. And that provided that, but now I have to get back. As you can tell, it's pretty tinny and pretty not good and very, very distorted. But I mean, just going around the UI is pretty, Okay, I mean, it's not fast. Like, I can say that it's not fast, but the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which it, which has a 60 hertz display compared to this, it's just, it runs through the OS like it's, not, like it's nothing. But to use this phone in 2022, it still has like the latest app support. So if you wanted to like stream Netflix or HBO Max or whatever, it still has support for those. And I'm pretty sure it still has support from most games on here, except Fortnite. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, just like doing basic tasks like emailing, which I don't email, but we're looking at emails and texting and calling. This phone is perfect for, honestly. Like it runs great and it has all the latest iMessage features too. And FaceTime also, of course, works on here along with all of those features, except for spatial audio FaceTime because, you know, it has an A9 in here. Also, the live text feature. So like say if you have like a piece of paper right here, with words like a note, like a school note, and you want to take a quick picture of it. And if you have like the picture, you can like in like newer iPhones, you can like scrub and you can actually copy the text from the image and paste it anywhere else. Well, this doesn't have that at all because I guess you have to have like an iPhone with an A12 Bionic or higher. This has the A9, so it's pretty dated, so it doesn't have that feature, which is a bit unfortunate. But it has the basic iOS 15 experience, so that's, if that's what you're looking for, this has it. So if you're looking for iMessage, FaceTime, and just, you know, the cool factor if you're in America, <laughs> this is not a bad option. Now, if you're looking to get this phone, like, right now, if you wanted to buy it right now, uh, standard prices I've seen around eBay is around $70 to $80. 
Now, for $70 and $80, what you get for the deal is pretty good. You know, you get all the Apple, you know, features that you would like with it. So, you know, that's something. But honestly, if I were looking for a new iPhone, I wouldn't really want to go cheap and go with an older model because this might be the last iOS version it gets, iOS 15, which it has, you know, it's been on iOS support for such a long time. But at the same time, you have to think about what you really like, feel like for longevity you might want to look for a better option like an iPhone 8 if you like really want a home button like an iPhone 8 I would look um, towards getting that or maybe if you want to jump and get the newer design find a 10R or find an 11 which I highly recommend the 11 which I know is pretty it's a bit more expensive than this phone obviously but the iPhone 11 for what it was has amazing battery life amazing camera and about the same quality display except way bigger <laughs> So if you don't really care, if you don't really like know too much about technology, so if anyone on here watching this video is just looking for an iPhone, I recommend you get an 11. But this, if you do get end up getting this or as like a hand me down like me whenever I was younger, it's actually not a bad phone. So just take that into consideration. Now in terms of the battery life, the battery life on here is pretty trash, even with a new battery in it. I started using this phone at around. 8 a.m., 8 in the morning, and then it was all, it was at 15% at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's just with regular use, with my regular YouTubing, my regular um, texting, and regular like Twitter, you know, whatever, basic tasks, I guess. It was down to 15% at 3 o'clock. And I'm, like, I understand I'm used to bigger batteries, better batteries, and phones, obviously, and, but I'm just do, watching regular YouTube, and literally it's just killing the battery like that and to me it's pretty unacceptable this battery in here is not good whatsoever i mean unless you're the kind of person who has battery banks with them all the time and you know plug has their phone plugged in at all times which is battery battery so just a heads up but if you're that kind of person then you can probably make it work but for me it's just not good enough for my needs so there's that <laughs> Now, in terms of the design of it, like, honestly, I think this design is gorgeous. Like, having the glass for the antenna vans and the aluminum body, this is a this is an amazing design. Like, I can't complain about how this phone looks. It looks good to me, you know? Even though if, it like, the front may look a little old, I, I honestly, I kind of like it, you know? Just the way that um, Apple designed their smaller phones back then is just really, really gorgeous, you know? So, I really appreciated the, the design while I was using it. Now... Down here, we have Touch ID for your biometric. So I'm used to Face ID, of course, because I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max and an iPhone 10 before that, and I'm really used to just looking at my phone and it instantly unlocks. But for this, you can just, you know, rest your thumb as soon as you open it and it unlocks, and it's the first generation Touch ID. So it's not the super fast second gen that Apple um, came up with, like at, with the iPhone 6S. They just used the first gen from iPhone 5S for this phone. But it's not too terribly slow. I mean, it's about the same speed as my OnePlus 7 Pro's um, in display fingerprint. So I'm honestly, I'm just kind of used to slower um, touch ID, but it's not bad. I mean, obviously it's, it's pretty safe. It's, you know, it has your fingerprint. Hopefully you don't have someone in the world that has the same fingerprint as you, even though it's literally physically impossible, but you know, it works. It works great and it works just fine. So there's no complaints there. Now, in terms of I.O., down here we have the lightning port and a foreign port over here to modern phones, the headphone jack. Now, I don't have any headphones. I actually use a headphone jack. I usually have just Bluetooth headphones, like my Skull Candy Crusher Evos are Bluetooth. My, um, Air, my Beats products are all Bluetooth. Obviously, my Crusher Evos have an aux you know, port at the bottom, but it's really bad, so I don't use it. But... Yeah, I mean, for anyone who, like, has, like, regular old ear pods from back in the day, these, having, like, a headphone jack is obviously a nice feature, so it's good to see it here, so if you're that kind of person who would, like, want to use this as an iPod replacement instead of having a terrible iPod touch, honestly, this is really good for that, I would think, because playing music doesn't really kill your battery much, like, at all, and obviously, if you want to use headphones, you can, so... For that reason, it actually might be a good option for you. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the camera. It's bad. <laughs> it's really, 
really bad. All right, so let me go ahead and just list the full specs of the camera. It's a single wide 12 megapixel cam wide camera with an f f 2.2 aperture with no optical image stabilization. So already it's not looking too good. It has digital zoom up to five times and the true tone flash, which you see right there. And for the front camera, it's a 1.2 megap megapixel camera. It is so bad. And it's also at uh, f 2.4 aperture, which ugh, it's just not good. Like the cameras on here are really bad. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some footage and so you can like see for yourself how not good it is. <laughs> so I started off with a selfie test. Um, as you can see, the iPhone SE on the left just pales in comparison. It, the colors are really wrong and just it looks a lot more, it looks a lot grainier just because it is obviously 1.2 megapixels and that iPhone 12 for Max is 12. So from the comparison, it's not looking too good already. <laughs> Next, I took a low light shot with a Funko Pop Fortnite Llama as a subject. And as you can see in low light, regular low light, the iPhone 12 Pro Max just absolutely smashes the iPhone SE. On the iPhone SE, it's way too dark to even see anything, and it looks kind of, kind of like green. And that's not what it's supposed to look like. And that's not all what the iPhone 12 Pro Max offers either. With computational photography, you can have whatever. So as soon as we turn night mode on, you can see a massive difference. <laughs> So yeah, in terms of low light photos, this thing is pretty much just not good. It's, you can't use it. Now I decided to take it outside um, to see if it would, you know, look at least decent in daylight. And it, to me, it looks pretty okay. I mean, the color is still, it's really dark. Like everything looks really dark and not, you know, life. And it's not full of life, if that makes any sense. And especially compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max, where it's just popping with color, looks amazing, looks realistic. HDR Plus obviously has a lot to do with it. So yeah, I mean, in terms of daylight photos, it's not very impressive. This is a video recording and mic recording from the front camera of the iPhone SE. And this is how it sounds like on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Yeah, we've come a long way. <laughs> So for the video, as you can see, um, it's recording at 10 or 4K at 30 FPS, and it's serviceable at best. Honestly, it still looks really grainy for 4K, and the autofocus uh, failed here at the bar test. But yeah, in terms of the video for the iPhone SE, it's not really good. Now comparing it to the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's honestly kind of unfair. It just it looks so much better. Look at that tree. The colors are popping. Everything just looks good and smooth. It's 4K 60, and the autofocus works perfectly. You know, it's we've just really come a long way in terms of camera technology. So after seeing all that, you're probably disappointed about how it looks, but maybe I'm being a little too harsh to this thing. To be fair, it came out in 2016, and it had the same camera as the iPhone 6S, I believe. The base one, not the, uh, you know, plus version. So... And with that being said, like obviously fitting that camera in there was was pretty awesome. But you know it does it is from 2016. It's now 2022, so about five years, or obviously more than that, six years, whatever. Um, for about six years um, difference in camera technology and image sim image signal processing, obviously this is gonna look bad in comparison. But I mean, if you're just using this to you know shoot like videos and photos of like your family doing like a sport activity, like having a little Jimmy playing football and you just want to take a quick picture of him, it's serviceable for that, obviously, but it's not going to be very clear. And, well, the colors will probably look bad. But, honestly, if you're getting this as a gift for, like, your grandparent or something, I'm sure they would love this. Or even if you, are like, have a little, like, uh, you have a kid and you don't want to give them, like, a full-fledged, like, expensive phone, obviously, because they're a child. They're not going to use all of that. Giving them probably... Giving them this would probably be a really good option. I think what this would make is a very good um, first iPhone for anyone. For me, it was my second iPhone, but I'm not, honestly, I'm just going to ignore the 5C because I didn't even have it all that long. It was just, you know, for funsies. Um, but this is the first phone I used, like, main for, like, a while. And honestly, and with my experience for it, I loved it because I didn't, you know, obviously didn't have anything better, but it was still an amazing experience when I had it. And honestly, it was still an okay experience for me today. So, um, if you are, if you do have it, it's a pretty good phone. But I would recommend obviously upgrading because newer and better things have come out throughout the years. So, but if you do ha still have this, don't be disappointed with this thing. Um, keep rocking it, keep loving it, 
it's a pretty good phone. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to make a little iPhone SE review in 2022. Um, something fun, a challenge for myself because, you know, why not? Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, this is probably going to be my very next video. It's the at game Sega Genesis Ultimate Portable Player. And you're gonna, you're gonna see how bad this thing is real quick. But um, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, like it and dislike it. If you don't like it, that's okay. Um, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.